It's me, Jonathan, and I want to wish everybody good Yontif, Chag Sameach, a very happy Passover. Manishtana Halayla Hazeh Mikol Halaylot. How is this night different from all other nights? Now you may think that the answer this year is quite obvious. On all other Seder nights, we gather around tables just like this one, sharing food and drink, conversation, and tradition. This year, you and I, indeed all of us, are going to be celebrating Pesach, our liberation from bondage, privately, in our own homes, under unprecedented circumstances. We are not the first Jews, nor are we likely to be the last, to shelter in place on this sacred night, this Leil Shomrim, this night of watching. In the Exodus story, the Israelites were instructed by God to stay in their homes, having painted their doorposts in lamb's blood, hoping to avert the plague afflicting so many around them. This year, we are staying in our homes, hoping to avert a virus that is threatening all of us. The famous story, recorded, the famous story recorded in the Haggadah of the five great sages who gathered in secret at B'nai Brak in the land of Israel, has them discussing and learning Torah and staying up through the night until their disciples rouse them for morning prayers. And these sages, these heroes, they gathered at a precarious and dangerous time when the study of Torah was prohibited and punishable by death by the Roman powers. Can you cut that? Can I read you can keep, keep you can keep going. You can always you can always splice it in. Okay. You can always splice it, splice a new one. And if we have, like I said, if we have to redo it, if you, uh, because uh, there might be a little jump cut, but that's okay. Yeah. You're not gonna. This, right. this is not being shown on TV. All right. Showing up 58 individuals. All right. Say. And go. continue. The Torah tells us that on the day that the Israelites were to slaughter the lamb, it was to be one per household. And then the Torah says something fascinating. It says, quote, But if the household is too small for a lamb, let him share one with a neighbor who dwells nearby, in proportion to the number of persons. You shall contribute for the lamb according to what each household will eat. Now this teaches that at the very first Pesach, the very night of the Exodus, families shared with each other if they had too much for their own family. What does it mean for us to share our resources, to share our wisdom, and share God's protection during a time of pandemic? I think in part, it means that we have to share kindness and love, which are infinite resources. We have been and need to continue to help each other. This verse of Torah shows us that even the most holy, the most precious life-preserving thing, the Paschal Lamb, must be shared if the community is to survive <coughs> and thrive. Rather than dwell on what we don't have or, what we, or who we are not with tonight, let's take this unique opportunity to experience Passover in the way that most of us have never experienced it. Let's experience it with an urgency and kavana, an intention to really experience our moment in history and to experience as the Israelites did, huddled in their homes on this miraculous night, originally intended to save lives. I know it's hard and none of us expect it to be in this situation. At the Seder, we're told that each one of us in every generation must look upon ourselves as if we ourselves were personally redeemed from slavery by God. All of the rituals, the foods, and the prayers we say tonight are intended to let us taste the true meaning of freedom. Lahavdil, which is one of my favorite Hebrew expressions, means 
to make a distinction between two very different things. Lahavdil, I think that many of us might better understand and appreciate this meaning in ways we were never given the opportunity to explore in past seders. Let's continue to flatten the curve while still connecting with the deepest intentions of our tradition through this seder. Friends, we have told and retold this story in every age and under every circumstance. Tonight is no different. Jewish rituals ground us. It has and always will connect us to one another. This plague will end. Summer will come. We can do this. Let us begin. Now in front of you, friends, you have both the self-help Haggadah, which most of you are familiar with. Looks like this, which we use every year. And in addition, you have a handout booklet. And the very first page of the handout booklet looks like this. And no surprise, it says Order of the Seder. And these 15 pieces of order are the outline, if you will, of the Seder. And so a lovely tune has been created, many of you may know it, and we sing it at the beginning of the Seder, almost as if these were opening credits or an explanation of what's to come. So if you know this, please join me. Again, we're on page one of your supplement, The Order of the Seder. And we begin reading the Hebrew, and you'll also see the transliteration in English letters right next to it. And it goes like this. Sing along with me. Kadesh or Chatz, Karpas Yachatz, Magid Raksa, Motsi Matza, Maror Korech, Shulchan Orech, Safun Barech, Hallel Nirza. Friends, we're so pleased that our executive director, Sheila Bogan, will lead us in lighting the candles for Yantav. Amen. Amen. Very nice. Now the first one we said is Kadesh, which is Kiddush. And as you know, every Shabbat and every Jewish holiday begins with Kiddush. So now I'm going to ask you to open up your Haggadah. These are the laminated booklets with the three rings. It says Self-Help Home Haggadah. And I would like you to please turn to page two, where it says the first cup. And mine's a little marked up, as all Seder leaders are. And there are two little Kiddush cups on the top. And so please join me. You'll have juice or wine in your apartments. And if you wish to, you can rise with me as we make the Kiddush for Passover. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Am Verum Amanu Mikol Ashon Vikichanu B'mitzvotav Vatiten Lanu Adonai Eloheinu Ve'ahava Moadim L'Simcha Chagim Uzmanim L'Sason Et Yom Chag HaMatzot Hazeh Zman Cherutenu Mikra Kodesh Zecher L'Tziat Mitzrayim Ki Ivanu Vacharta Ve'otanu Kidoshta Mikohamim, flip the page. Umoade kachicha, bisim kav sason, hin chal tanu. Baruch atadonai, mikadesh Yisrael, vehazmanim. And then, as we do on the first night of every holiday, we sing Shechianu, which is on the bottom of page three. So please join me. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekiemanu Vehigianu Lazman Hazeh L'chaim Okay friends, we're now at the second part of our Seder. If you turn to page 4, 
page 4 in your Haggadah, we arrived at Orchatz. Now this is the ceremonial washing of our hands without a bracha. So, I'm going to walk right over here to the lovely washing station that Sophie set up. This is the ceremonial washing, so I don't need soap or the 20-second timer. And now we've arrived at Karpas. This, my friends, as you all know, is Karpas. And I invite the people at our Seder to also take a piece. Karpas is the green vegetable. And what's another name for Pesach, of course? Chag Ha'abid, the holiday of the springtime. So the parsley, or actually any green vegetable, represents spring and growth and things coming back to life. But of course, the minhag is that we dip the parsley, the karpas, in salt water. Now, who knows what the salt water represents? Tears. It tears. represents our tears. The tears, the painful memory, the painful experience of our slavery. So I invite all of you with your Seder plates in your apartments to take your karpas or celery and to dip it into the salt water. And then once everyone's done that, we will make the bracha, which is borei priha adama. It's also on page four. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, borei periha adama. And now, we are moving right along, we have reached yachatz. Yachatz is when we break, we take out the matzot, the matzot for the first time, during the Seder, and you can see the lovely Seder plate, and our Sophie herself hand sewed and designed this beautiful uh, skirtlet or bed skirt or whatever the equivalent would be for a Seder plate. Seder plate skirt. A skater plate skirt. There we go. Takes a village. A Seder plate skirt. This is the middle matzo, of course. The matzo. We have three matzot for our Seder right here, and I will take the middle one. Put the other two back, the middle matzah, I will break it in half, and I will put the piece that I break apart in this beautiful little bag and put it aside, and it will be hidden, and all of you are going to have to help us find it so we can conclude the Seder with the afikoman. This is the afikoman. So for now, I'm going to put this aside. Everybody full now from Karpas? Good. So I'm going to put my mask back on, and now we're still, I'm going to take it off now while I speak to you, but while I'm not on camera, I'm going to put it back on, and we are beginning Magi, the heart of the Seder. This is retelling the story of the Exodus, the essence of the mitzvah for tonight. And to start us off, Sheila is going to read us Halach Manya, which is in Aramaic, and we're still on page four in your Haggadah, the paragraph two-thirds of the way down, Halach Manya. Halach Manya di Ochru Ahavasanu Ba'arya de Mitzrayim. This is the bread of affliction which our forefathers ate in the land of Egypt. This is the bit of the Haggadah that I like the most, called Dichvin Yese Riyecho. All those who are hungry, let them come and eat. All those who are needy, let them come and celebrate the Passover with us. That embodies the self-help hold in just two sentences. All are welcome. All have been welcomed here. All have been fed here. All have been given place here. And we're just following the ancient, ancient traditions set in Egypt, on the way out of Egypt, all those years ago. Rashana haba ba'ara di Yisrael, oshata avde rashana haba b'nei chorim. Let's celebrate Passover. Now we are here. Next year, may we be in the land of Israel. Now we are slaves. Next year, may we be free men. It is rather 
apropos for this particular Passover, this particular Pesach, that we actually are still in the Galut, we haven't been um, rescued by the Messiah, by Moshiach, but yet we are slaves to this terrible virus with which we find ourselves. We are living as slaves, we are slaves to keeping ourselves away from everybody, from social distancing, from mixing, from going out with friends. But remember, we have faith, we have the good Lord watching over all of us, and we will endure, and we will be successful. Amen. Amen. Friends, we now come to one of the most exciting and, of course, beautiful and traditional parts of the Seder, the Manishtana, the four questions. So please join us. We're on page five, page five of your Haggadah, Manishtana. Manishtana halayla hazeh mikol halelot mikol halelot shebechol halelot anu ochlim chametz umatza chametz umatza halayla hazeh halayla hazeh Next page. Shebechol halelot anu matbilin afilu pamechat afilu pamechat halayla hazeh halayla hazeh chete peamim halayla hazeh halayla hazeh chete peamim. Shebechol halelot anu ochli Ben yoshvinu ben misubim Ben yoshvinu ben misubim Halayla hazeh, halayla hazeh Kulanu misubim Halayla hazeh, halayla hazeh Kulanu misubim Joni, would you like to read the English of the four questions for us, please, starting on the bottom of page five? Absolutely. On all other nights, we eat either leavened bread or matzah, unleavened. On this night, why only unleavened bread? On all other nights, we eat herbs of any kind. On this night, why only bitter herbs? On all other nights, we do not sip our herbs even once. Dip. Start over. I guess start over. Just no, on number three. On all of the nights, we do not dip our herbs even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? On all other nights, we eat our meals in any manner. On this night, why do we sit around the table together in a reclining position? And of course, the rest of the Seder, in one form or another, is answering these questions in some way. But the simple answer is the one line that we are about to sing together. So I ask you now to go back to your handouts. These are the paper handouts and turn to page three. Page three of your handouts and it says in transliteration at the top, Avadim Hayinu. All together now. Avadim Hayinu, Hayinu. Let's continue. Join me in the Hebrew, on, still on page three in the supplement. Avadim hayinu lefaro b'mitzrayim. 
ויוציאנו אדוני אלוהינו משם, ביד חזקה וזרוע נטויה, ואילו לא הוציא הקדוש ברוך הוא את אבותינו ממצרים, הרי אנו ובנינו ובני בנינו משובדים היינו לפרעה במצרים, ואפילו כולנו חכמים, כולנו נבונים, כולנו זקנים, כולנו יודעים את התורה, מצווה עלינו לספר בציאת מצרים. וכל מרבה לספר בציאת מצרים, הרי זה משובח. This is such a key point. Let's read the English together. <laughs> We're still on page three, my friends. English? Sure. Okay. Still on page three. We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, and God brought us forth from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And if God had not brought our ancestors out from Egypt, then we, our children, and our children's children would still be Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt. Even if all of us were wise, all of us full of understanding, all of us elders, all of us knowing in the Torah, we should still have the mitzvah to tell the story of the exodus from Egypt, and the more one tells the story of the departure from Egypt, the more praiseworthy one is. Okay, we turn back now to our Haggadah. We're still on page 7 of the Haggadah. You'll see the paragraph towards the bottom. It says, raise the cup of wine and say, and that's what we're going to do. So everyone, take your cup of juice or wine and lift it up, and you can read with me together. This promise made to our forefathers holds true also for us. For more than once have they risen against us to destroy us. In every generation they rise against us and seek our destruction. But the Holy One, blessed be He, saved us from their hands. And this beautiful melody is the Hebrew of what we just said in English. The he sha'amda. The he sha'amda, the he sha'amda, la bo'tenu velanu. The he sha'amda, the he sha'amda, la bo'tenu velanu. Shema echad. The whole door by the door. Om dimaleinu lechalo. That was lovely. Thank you. Let's turn to page 8. Not my first rodeo. Let's turn to page 8 in our Haggadot at the top of the page in English. Liza, would you lead us in this, please? And the Egyptians did evil unto us, and they made us suffer. They set upon us hard work. So we cried unto the Eternal, the God of our fathers, and the Eternal heard our voice. And he saw our affliction, and our burden, and our oppression. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And the Eternal brought us forth from Egypt, with a strong hand, and with an outstretched arm, and with great terror, and with signs and wonders. So now we've arrived at the four children. Turn to page 10, please. As many people do in our modern era, instead of the four sons, I think it's appropriate to call it the four children. Uh, because, of course, we know now that our sons and daughters both learn our tradition and both can struggle with it and have questions. And one of the things that there are many, many interpretations of the four questions, but the one of the most engaging and enlightening that I know of, that I've read, is not to think of these as four individual children, but think of these as parts, components. We have each one of these within us. Each child has the wise, the interested, the engaged part. Each one has the sinful or the challenging part, the skeptic. Each one of us has things that befuddle us, the simple child. And then there are circumstances in life where we don't even know how to formulate the question. So if we think about the four children as part and parcel of each one of us, of each one of our children and grandchildren, I think it takes on additional meaning. So we're on the top of page 10, the four children. The Torah speaks about four children. The wise child asks, what is the meaning of the rules and laws and customs which the eternal our God has commanded us? The sinful child asks, what is the meaning of this service to you? 
The simple child asks, what is this? And the child who does not even know how to ask. For all of these children, we must retell the story of Pesach, how the Eternal brought each one of us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. Friends, we're now on page 11 and 12 for the 10 plagues. And as many of you know, even though we're eternally grateful for God for freeing us and redeeming us from Egypt, we are prohibited from taking joy at the death of destruction of our enemies. So as we recite the plagues, we take a drop of our wine or our juice, either with a spoon or a clean pinky, I hope you've all washed for 20 seconds, and we take out a drop to diminish our cup of joy, to acknowledge that even though we were liberated and gained freedom, other people died. Even people who may have deserved it, we still do not celebrate it. So we're on page 11 and 12 for the 10 plagues, and get ready for something fun and zany. Dom, blood. Spardea, frogs. frogs. Kinim, lice. <laughs> Arrow, wild beasts. Mm. Dever, cattle disease. Shreen, boils. Varad, hail. Arbe, locusts. Hoshach, darkness. Makat, bechorot, slaying of the firstborn. All right, friends, if that didn't put you in the mood to sing, I don't know what will. We've arrived at perhaps the most joyous part of the Seder, Dayenu. Dayenu starts on page 14 in the Hebrew, and then we'll do the English on page 13, the facing page. For now, we're on page 14. Please join singing Dayenu with us. Ilu hoti hoti anu hoti anu mi mitrayim hoti anu mi mitrayim Dayenu Dai Dayenu Dai Dayenu 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 Dai Dayenu Dai Dayenu 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 Dai Dayenu Dai Dayenu Dai Dayenu Dai Dayenu Yilu natan natan lanu natan lanu et ha Shabbat natan lanu et ha Shabbat dayenu dai 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 dayenu line three. Ilu Kravanu Lanu a Harsina Belona Tanlanu et a Tora Dayenu. Ilu Natan Lanu et a Tora Velo Hitten Sanali Eretz Yisrael Dayenu. Line 7. Ilu Hitten Sanali Eretz Yisrael Velo Vanu Lanu Fat Mit Beta Bahira Dayenu. Big finish. Dai Dayenu. Dai Dayenu. Dai Dayenu. Okay, that was wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Turn into your handouts now, back to your handouts, to page four. Page four of your handout. And here we are going to talk about the three most important symbols of Pesach, which all are on, well, two of them are on our center plate, and one is the matzah, which is separate. So page four in your handout. Rabban Gamliel used to say, anyone who has not discussed these three things on Passover has not fulfilled his duty, namely Pesach, Matzah, and Maror. The Passover offering, the unleavened bread, and the bitter herbs. Who would like to read a description of what the Pesach is on page 4 in the handout? Why did our ancestors eat the Passover offering during the period of the temple? It is because God passed over the houses of our ancestors in Egypt, as it is written. You shall say, it is the Passover offering for the Lord who passed over the houses of the children in Egypt 
when he smote, smote the Egyptians and spared our houses. The people knelt and bowed down. All right, who would like to read the description of matzah? I do. Matzah. Why do we eat this matzah? It is because God revealed himself to our ancestors and redeemed them before their dough had time to rise. As it is written, they baked the dough which they had brought out of Egypt onto unleavened cakes, for they were driven out of Egypt and could not delay, nor had they prepared any provision for their journey. Matzah. Thank you. Maror, Sheila, will you read about the bitter herbs for us, please? Maror, why do we eat this bitter herb? It is because the Egyptians embittered our lives of our ancestors in Egypt. As it is written, they made life bitter for them with hard labor, with clay and bricks, and with all kinds of labor in the field. Whatever work tasks they performed were backbreaking. We continue together at the very last paragraph of page four. In every generation, it is our duty to regard ourselves as though each of us personally had come out of Egypt. As it is written, you shall tell your children on that day. This is on account of what God did for me when I came out of Egypt. It was not only our ancestors who the Holy One redeemed from slavery, we too were redeemed with them. As it is written, God took us out from there so that he might take us to the land which he had shown to our ancestors. Okay. And now we have arrived at the second cup of wine. So turn back in your Haggadah in the laminated booklet to page 15. Page 15. I hope everybody still has a full cup, or hopefully the aides and the kitchen staff is going around refilling everybody. Donald, don't overdo it. Now, now everyone's getting called out. All right, please join me on page 15. We're on line three of page 15. Joining our Seder now is Renee. Welcome. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Peri Adafen And I didn't mention this earlier and I didn't mention this earlier but of course when we drink we lean to our left because drinking wine is a sign of being free men and free women and also when you lean it's a sign of reclining and luxury and also there's a very important biological reason we digest, and what, who's the medical staff? The, the part, the tube that the liquid is on the left. If you try to drink leaning to your right, you will choke. Please don't try it. But that's why we lean to our left. Watch my esophagus. Esophagus, that was the word I was looking for. Is that science? That is science. You can look that up. You can look that up. Okay, now we have arrived at Raksa. This is where we wash our hands in preparation of eating. And this is the second washing, and this one we do do with the bracha. So I am going to wash on behalf of all of you. Of course, if you want to, and it's safe in your apartment, you can take a cup of water and wash and join the, and do the bracha with me as well. And just by the way, of course, this is not in lieu of actual washing with soap and water. Again, everyone must wash with soap and water before you begin eating. Okay. This is ceremonial, but with the bracha. So we are on the top of page, I'm sorry, we are in the middle of page 15, line 5. So I'm going to walk over to the washing station. Amen. Okay, and now... We are about to say motzi, but this being Pesach, we have two brachas before we eat the matzah. We do the regular motzi because, of course, for the next eight days, matzah is our bread. And, of course, because it's Yantif, and this is a particular mitzvah, mitzvah de Araita, direct from the Torah, we say a special bracha called al achilat matzah. So everyone should, on their individual Seder plates or on their dinner trays, have matzah. This is a good time to take a piece. 
Okay, friends, we're on page 16 for the two brachas. Please join me. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher gichan mitzvotah v'tzivanu al achilat matzah. Oh, I forgot to announce that. Yes, what's our self help tradition to eat matzah? As far as I know, since probably, as Agnes has been here 41 years, and I've been here for 31, we've had matzah with, with margarine and honey. And we put it on there is the best thing. Some people like it with jelly, but not our residents. Okay, show us how you do it. This is the even our actually even our uh, employees love it this way. Once they've learned to how to, do it. once they don't how to enjoy it. Yeah. No, it's margarine, no butter. Oh, we got, uh, oh, you have to try it. Sheila. I never, I need margarine too. I never had this before. Try it. It's, it's very good. I don't know who came up with it. It was a Becker. It's like Rosh Hashanah and Pesach mixed. We do that in the family. <laughs> yeah, the gefilte fish, we make fresh gefilte fish. Okay, so if you show us how you eat it. I just don't, I ate terrible. All right, friends, we're still going through the three symbols of Pesach, and we've now arrived at the bitter herb, the maror. The maror, you may be familiar with it in two forms. One is the horseradish that is ground up into the bright red uh, puree, and this is what regular horseradish root looks like. It's white, and it's very strong. I'm not sure which one you're going to have on your Seder plate, but whichever one you have, now's the time to take a little piece. If you're very brave, you can eat it straight, or if you're more like me, you can dip it in the haroset. Take a little bit on the maror, and the bracha we're going to say together is on line 9 of page 16. Line 9 of page 16. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, asher kichano, Mitzvotov, Mitzvano, Ala Filat Maror. There you go. All right, I hope everyone enjoyed that and your sinuses are nice and clear and you're wide awake because now we are coming to the Hillel Sandwich. The Hillel Sandwich is when the great Talmudic sage Hillel said that the mitzvah is to eat maror and matzah together. So he came up with the idea that the Torah really meant it, together, so in a sandwich. So take a piece of matzah and break it in half and put a little maror on it. This time I'm going to take the horseradish, because it's the ground horseradish, because it's spreadable, and cover it with the second piece, and voila, you have your Hillel sandwich. And you can read with me together on page 16, line 11. Zecher le mikdash ke hillel. Ken asa hillel bizman shepeta mikdash haya kayam. Haya korech matza umaror lochel biyacha. Le kayem mashinemar. Al matzot umorurim yochluhu. Where is it? Where's the wine? I'm just on my second And class. now, it's Shulchan Oref. It is time for the festival meal. The aides and the kitchen staff and all the beautiful people who help us. And let's take a second to acknowledge them for making this case up under very difficult circumstances and providing each and every one of you an individual Seder plate in addition to dinner. So your meals are either there or they will arrive very soon. So, bete avon, enjoy, bon appetit, enjoy your Seder meal. Chag Sameach. Now let's hide the afikomen. Shh. 
Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your dinner. I know I did. I hope you've got some uh, energy and a second wing, wind so we can finish our Seder and sing some songs. But of course, the first thing we have to do before we can continue is find the Afi Komen. I thought I left it right here. Guys, now i got to go look for the Afi Komen. Hmm. Let's see if it's under Sophie's hairnet. No. <laughs> That's where you get it. Um, mm. Is it under Ariel's wig? <laughs> no, can we get it? Find is it in the curtains? No. Is it under where Afrat was sitting? <gasps> hold on, hold on, hold on. No. Uh -oh. <gasps> da 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 da! Uh -oh. Komen! We can finish now. And the minhag, of course, is that this is quote unquote dessert. So everybody can take a little piece and have your dessert from the Afi Komen. And because it's our virtual Seder, I don't have any guilt to give out. Uh, and Efrat, this is for you. Efrat's filming this right now. <laughs> okay, we have found the Afi Komen and eaten from it. And so now it is time to do the Birkata Mazon, the Grace After Meals, which we do for every Shabbat and holiday. In your Haggadah, again, back to the laminated booklets, we're on page 17, and we are going to do an abbreviated Birkat Hamazon, so page 17 and the top of page 18. Line 117. Shir Hamalot et Shivat Zion Hayinu Kechomi Az Yemale Sopinu Azori bedima berina yitoru Haloch yelechu vacho Nosem meshech hazarapo Oyavo yavo berina Nose alumotam Rabbo Tainivarech Yehishem Madonai Varach Metavi Adolam Bershu Maranam Varabanam Varabotai Nivarech Elohim Shalchanu Mishelo Baruch Elohim Shalchanu Mishelo Uktuvo Chayinu The top of page 18, let's all sing together. Birkata Mazon, the top of page 18. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hazan et HaOlam Kulo Bituvo Bechein Bechesed Ubrachamim Hu Noten Lechem Lechol Basar Ki Leolam Chasto Uktuvo Hagadol Tami locha salanu ve alya salanu ma zon leolam va et ba avor shemo hagado ke wel zan u farne slako u me tiv lako u me chin ma zon be chobriota asher bara baruch atadonai hazan et hako. Okay, friends, and just like that, we have arrived at the third cup of wine. We're on page 20 in your Haggadah. Again, page 20. Uh, I hope you have some juice or wine left. If not, uh, you can use water and pretend. We're on the top of page 20. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri Hagafen 
So on page 20, we do a tiny little excerpt of Hallel. Hallel are the psalms of praise that we do on every happy holiday. And of course, Pesach is one of the happiness. So let's chant Hodu Lashem together on page 20. Hodu Ladonai Kitov, Kile Olam Chastov. Yom Runa Yisrael, Kile Olam Chastov. Yom Runa Beit Aharon, Kile Olam Chastov. Yom Runa Yirei Adonai, Kile Olam Chastov. And now, before we conclude, it is time for us to open the door for Elijah. So, of course, this is a minhag, and this minhag comes to us because Elijah is going to be the herald, the person who welcomes the Messiah. So, during Pesach, at a time where we're celebrating and talking about redemption and freedom, of course, our greatest wish is that the world itself be redeemed, not just us and not just the Jewish people. So, we open the door to symbolically invite Elijah into our Seder at this joyous time. We're going to take a short walk to the front door and we are going to open the door for Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu Hanavi. The lobby and we're going to open the door. Wow. And we're going to walk outside. And I invite everybody who was at the Seder with me to join me as we pray and welcome Eliyahu to bring us the Mashiach and welcome in the Messianic era. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hatishvi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Agiladi, Vimirami Amenu, Yavo Eleinu, Imashiach Ben David, of course, we come to one of the more serious parts of the Seder, which is a long-standing self-help tradition that, if my memory serves correctly, this was authored by several residents, including many survivors. And it's on page 23 of your Haggadah, of the booklet, The Ten Threats to Peace and Freedom. And of course, these were the ten threats that were most active in residents' mind at the time. And sadly, I'm sure we could add to this list today, but we honor our self-help legacy by reciting this every year. Page 23. We are grateful for progress towards lasting peace and freedom, but know there is still pain and suffering around the world. Just as our ancestors were enslaved in Egypt, so there are still Jews and other peoples enslaved by fear, hate, prejudice, and intolerance. We recognize these ten threats not only to Jews, but to all the people of the world, and pray for peace and freedom, and that these ten threats be banished forever. Terrorism, global disorder, ethnic cleansing, desecration of holy sites, neo-Nazism, ignorance, institutionalized anti-Semitism, apathy, and Holocaust revisionism. Okay, friends, we have arrived at the fourth and final cup of wine. So anybody who's still awake, please take your wine cup or your juice cup, lift it, and we sing together the bracha. We're on the top of page 21. The top of 21. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri Amen. And now that has concluded our Seder. We have gone through all 15 of the benchmarks, of the markers of the Seder, and we've arrived at the last one, which is Nirtzah, the conclusion. So read with me together on page 21. Page 21 in the English. Ended is the Passover Seder according to custom, statute, and law. As we were worthy to celebrate it this year, so may we perform it in future years. O pure one in heaven above, restore the congregation of Israel in your love. Speedily lead your redeemed people to Zion in joy. And turn the page nice and loud. Lashana haba Yerushalayim. Next year in Jerusalem. Shana haba 
לירושלים לשנה הבאה, לירושלים לשנה הבאה, לירושלים, שנה הבאה, ירושלים הבירה. Chag Sameach, everybody. This was so nice. I know this isn't what we planned for, what we hoped for, but I hope you got meaning and some joy out of this and that you enjoyed doing a traditional Seder with me and with Ariel and Efrat and Ivory and Sheila and Renee. And I know I'm probably forgetting somebody, but thank you to everybody who came down to make our Seder Hamish and Freilich. And most of all, thank you. Thank you for being part of this with us, for singing in your room, for being patient and knowing, as I said at the very beginning, that this plague will end, summer will come, and we will resolve and we be restored to our regular lives, God willing, speedily, and very quickly. Good night and Chag Sameach. Happy Passover! Happy Passover! Happy Passover, everybody! Chag Sameach! Happy Passover to our residents. Happy Passover.
butcher that slew the ox that drank the water that quenched the fire that burned the stick that beat the dog that bit the cat that ate the goat that father bought for two so sim God 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 then came the holy one blessed be he and slew the angel of death that slew the butcher, that slew the ox, that drank the water, that quenched the fire, that burned the stick, that beat the dog, that bit the cat, that ate the goat, that father bought for two sous. Shall I am a mila? 